did you come here to hear a tale? Fancy yourself. Little reading, dear. We came just to the right place. Just so happens that I've been doing a little bit of writing during these times. And uh, you may be familiar with uh, George Reginald Randolph Martin's great work of uh, Song of Ice and Fire. You may know it as The Game of Thrones, popular television show on home box office. Well, uh, because I'm a bit of a creative type, I decided to do a little tweaking. Uh, there's some parts of the work that I felt could use a little bit more depth. Uh, so for those of you who are familiar with the source material, uh, this is in no way trying to impede on George's universe. It belongs to him. It is his. Uh, just trying to add a, a little pizzazz. little flair, if you will. The scene I'm going to read to you today is the infamous Red Wedding scene. And, as you may be aware, the scene is not quite pleasant. So, if you're here expecting uh, rainbows and unicorns and adventures uh, where the, the, the hero saves the day, you might wind up being a bit disappointed. So, without further ado, I present to you Nigel Fluffington's version of The Red Wedding, The Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire, originally uh, purveyed by George Randolph Rutabaga Martin. Cheers. Now, seated between Raymond Frey, Bruce Bolton, and Catelyn Stark listens to the continuous drumming of the whole musicians. Suddenly, the pounding stops. One of the minstrels, a charming lad of the Steel Dragon, steps forward and addresses the guests of the wedding feasts. Starks, he says. Phrase. And all distinguished guests. There was a time when just I was a young squire who would adorn the crest of these skilled minstrels upon my chamber wall. And now, I'm one of them. So follow thy dreams, gents. Follow thy dreams. And with that, the musicians broke in the song, filling the hall with excitement and rigor. Caitlin watches as her son Rob dances with several of the Frey maids. And Edmure dotes his soon-to-be wife, Roslyn. She suddenly thought of Benjen. Not Eddard's lost brother, but the ancient power couple of Affleck and Aniston. 
Oh, how they would have reveled in the pervality of this eloquent affair. The thought was interrupted as her attention was diverted to the court of jesters rehearsing bemusingly in the side hall. So Heathen Ledger, the only jester in Westeros ever to be knighted, was providing samples of his art for the others to study. And as the group exchanged examples of their antics, Lady Stark noticed Jared Leto, universally considered the worst jester in all of recorded history and bringer of loathing, feverishly studying the group, as it were. And from the kitchen, the high chief of culinary arts, Master Dwayne, the rock, son of John, could be heard whistling. And even from her distance, Cat could smell what he was cooking. Seated at the table next to where Cat was sitting was the representatives of the Riverlands Common. Now, she did not know them by name, but she recognized a few, for they were the uh, creme de la creme of the masses, if you will. Uh, these were the ones who were not afraid to comment when prompted, uh, she saw. Sarah Salsa, a marvel of intense superfluity. Uh, Bavoco, charmer for sure, and renowned dilettante. Uh, Rob Amuntz, the swollen pride of the Amuntz clan. The way, the shepherd uh, to those of whom do not know. Clock's boy, grandmaster architect of works, both frivolous and fastidious. Jerome, superior linguist and tinglist. Tink Bernay, the harbinger of glib and lurid, lurid prose. And last but not to be considered least, in the least, Bear Trap Shitcore, champion of the order he was untenable, but scintillating. Cat noted that the blood of the scribe, which was an ancient tribe from the drag of Orgrimmar, was sitting inconspicuously in the adjacent hall. Now these heathens followed a new god, not the one not the seven. Their clothing was drab and distasteful, stained, smelling of fresh and foul semen. Uh, their war chief, Amethyst, uh, the dirty bird, known for her penchant of all things, foul and foul. Sir Joshua, the platinum lad of a thousand voices. Sir Michael of uh, Termagurf, who had no patience for folly, unless the folly was his own, as was tradition amongst the Termagurfians. Uh, there was a... A what? A Oh... <clears throat> um, we'll, we'll just skip that one as it's not even a pronounceable word. Hmm, Selvian, the man boy. Well, man boy squire, as it were. Once knighted, he fell from grace as a 
potato falls from a tree. Lemmy Winks, the lemon lover, or perhaps lemmings, no one knew for sure. Wink, wink. Mm, then there was the one they called Moose, the innervator, stunbreaker. Sir Trevor, master of the melee. Oh, he would gleefully bury his cudgel into the supple flesh of all things dangly, drippy, and otherwise. Sir Kyle, cousin of Brain and Brain, famed cousin of Kyle. Now, buried deep within the Maester's library, one might trace the lineage and discover where hence of which of these cousin hast been initially claimed cousin to his cousin. But sadly, nobody really cared. And then there was Almond, unabashedly demure, yet brute, flamboyant. Yes, the group was uh, unmistakably degenerate, with the exception of Alejandro, who was uh, often mistaken for a, a Dornish prince, for uh, he would, would not dare to be observed wearing anything but the finest of silked robes and dressings to complement his walnut complexion. Now, sitting quietly at a torchlit table in the corner was the wolf pack, the sound cult. Lady Lana, purveyor of whispers, the spacciatore di formicolare of Dorn. This title being considered quite an accolade was usually reserved for the aristocracy and those of a particularly um, superior stock. With her was the doctor, Sheepson, of the faith and, and of chickpeas. Sir Cube, multifaceted, unwavering, and bold. Sir Matthew Scoggins, the, the tasteful gentleman. Lord Atreyu, bastard son of the metal gods. Sir Kraken, the bard, skilled linguist and Linguini ist High Lord Hindera, drinker of fine knowledge and uh, finer coffee. Lady Samantha, the painted imp, alluring, clawed. Scripta Thoro, the worldly and wordly hunter of the dead. Axel, the perpetually proud and grand wizard of the dark anime. Doc Ramson, gentle drifter, soft, supple hands. And uh, Sir Dabs, not Dabs, son of Dabs. Thoko, guardian of memes. Pucker, figs. Eudemian, the endowed, save for the uh, coldest of northern winters. Waffle Bean, son of biscuits and marmalade, and Team Dale, the watcher from beyond the wall. And the man they called God, who was not. The remaining guests were numerous and certainly not worth naming, with the exception of a, the exception of a, a few: the Septum Chester Coffee Pot, the Brown Priest, Archmaster Nigel Flufflefin, Sir Cordus Harrington the Third, Pride of House Mawson, 
Lady Oranda Chapstick, daughter of her mother's father, Sir Curtis Blurter, the turd burglar, uh, mm, Lord High Lord Peter Baggerton, master of ships and seamen, Sir Jonathan Taylor, son of Thomas, Lady Sarah Casey, Princess of the Lost Islands. Sir Hammond Borshank, the Wrecking Ball. Sir Lord Dromris, the Palindrome. A Bletchis Pomegranate, the Giant of the Chum Pum Jewel. Lady Shaftesbury, the Song of the Morning Wood. Sir Dank. Sama cheese. High General Rutabag of Farnsworth of the Northwood Tabernacle, Grand Minstrel Jeremy Mayo, the tree behind the veil, Intercontinental Champions Nikolai Volkov and Boris Zukov, Lord Lord Mortimer Porter, the corduroy boy. High Septum Baron Narsapon, the plumed peacock. Low Septum Gastropotamus, the vicious priest of the porcelain god. And Fenton Pontum Burn, the deviated Septum. Of course, Sir Francis Bacon and his plus one. Lord Egard Benedict Cumberpatch Adam Scott Pilgrimage Hedberger. Jebediah Springfield and his daughters, Greta Thunberg and Mary Lou Retton, known together as the Fab Three. Sir David Hasselhoff, the Knight's Rider. Sir Nick Knack Paddywhack with the boner of dogs and the head pecked redneck. Sir Armin Hammer. Sir Bruce Dickinson, the cock of the walk, Lord Alfred Newman, the mad, Lady Johnny Love Chachi, the sonnet of a brighter bale, Sir John Malkovich and Lady Mila Jovovich, and joined by their plutonic companions, uh, Marcus Runfalo and, of course, uh, Lady Janine Garofalo. And that was pretty much all of the who's who and what's what at the wedding at the Frey House. Yes, my friends, there was certainly a grand affair. Many people, many, 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 many people attended the Red Wedding. And I think we'll end it there for now. We don't want to spoil anything for you now, do we? Uh, but you can come back again, could you not? We can read a little bit more. Tell you more about the, uh, the tales and the who's who and the kingdom of Westeros. Um, and that, my friends, is where we will end the tale for this evening, but... Uh, Thank you for joining me today. It is quite a treat. I am uh, Nigel Fluffing Flynn, and this is the good ASMR show, as it were. Whispers, or the uh, Spacciatore di Fimicolore, Lady Alana, hmm. Purveyor of Whispers, the Spacciatore di Fimicolore. The 
the <laughs> Dispatchatore de Formic. 